Well, hello everyone. It is the first Friday in August. Yay! And it's time for Finance Fridays. I first want to say thank you to all of you who shared questions from the last Finance Fridays, um, which was in July. And actually today's quick chat was derived from uh, a couple questions that came in from the last Finance Friday. So thank you, thank you to all of you who sent in questions. I'm going to encourage you just like I did last time, put your questions down in the comments um, as you are coming in, put your comment, your questions down in the comments. Even after we finish the chat, put in your questions, send your questions because um, your questions help, help fuel and um, drive the topics that we discuss. Uh, my goal is to provide useful information for you along your financial journey. Um, for, you, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Tamara Durbin, and I um, started Money Basics probably about eight or nine years ago, and it was birthed out of my passion for financial literacy. My background um, is in the finance and accounting area, but I have a passion for educating people on financial topics, coaching them um, with managing their money well, and also providing workshops, um, whether it's to faith-based organizations, nonprofits, corporations, providing workshops to assist in helping people learn how to budget, um, learn how to get out of debt, learn how to save, and then also just create um, goals, financial goals for their life so that they can be financially free and also be um, who they desire to be financially. So those, that's a little bit about me. Um, so I am, this is gonna be a quick chat, I have like a busy Friday evening, unfortunately. Well, I guess it's fortunate. But so this is going to be a quick chat, hopefully. Um, but I pray that it will not only just be quick, but it will be useful. Hey, Arnell, I'm going to try to be more interactive when I see people coming in um, and see your questions. But um, I pray that this chat will be useful for you today. So our topic today is credit, okay? I want to ask you as you're coming in, um, as you're watching, share, 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 share with your, um, your followers, your audience. So the topic today is credit. Um, credit really lets a lender know if you're going to pay them back. Your credit is your financial name, okay? So always think of that. Your credit is your financial name. When you give your word and say, hey, I'm going to be somewhere at five, so you're telling you're promising to be somewhere at five. Or if you're telling someone, I'm going to pay you back, just a personal loan, that's your, your credibility. So your credit is your financial name. It's what you show to the public. It's just what you show to a lender, a potential lender, the odds of you paying them back, okay? So when people pull your credit, they're trying to determine, is this person gonna pay me back, okay? So sometimes when you hear different financial voices, um, when they talk about credit, they always equate it with debt. So today, I'm not talking about, um, I am gonna talk about debt a little bit, but when I'm talking about maintaining a financial, a good financial name, I'm not speaking about being in debt, okay? I want you to have good credit and not be in debt. That is my goal for you, to have great credit, but to not be in debt. I would say that your credit is a tool that you can use along this financial journey. I believe if you use your credit wisely and properly, it can help you to go further along this financial journey and assist you in reaching your financial goals. A lot of times people who have great credit get a lot more accomplished in life, especially from a financial standpoint. So having good credit and a good financial name is extremely important. So today, in this chat, I really want to encourage you, no matter where you are as it relates to credit, um, I want to really encourage you, whether you need to restore your financial name or maintain your financial name, I want to talk to you, okay, today. 
All right. So the first thing um, I wanted to to chat about is to see what does your financial name say about you? Do you even know what your financial name looks like? So basically, I'm asking you, do you know what's on your credit report? Do you know what your credit report is saying about you? OK, um, and is it true? The things that are on your financial, your, your credit report, are those things true? In previous chats, I've encouraged you to pull your credit report. That is extremely important to pull your credit report. You should be pulling your credit report at least on an annual basis. You can go to www.annualcreditreport.com and you can get a free credit report from all three of the bureaus. The three bureaus are, just so you know, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. OK, so it'll give you a credit, a, a combined three, three bureau report for free. It's required by the federal government that they provide this to you annually and look through your credit report. What is your credit report saying about you? Is it saying that you pay on time? Is it saying that you pay late? Is it saying that you haven't paid? Um, is it saying that you carry too much debt? But the, one of the two key things I want to make sure that you look for are, is everything correct? Because sometimes things are on your credit report that you didn't do. Maybe your credit, your identity has been stolen. So that's a key thing that you should always pull your credit report to make sure that your financial name has not been stolen. Okay? So I want you to do that. Make sure that everything is correct, okay? Make sure every every debt that's on there that you have incurred yourself, whatever, even open credit lines that you, if you don't have any debt, but you have open credit line, make sure all the lines you have personally open and you know about them, okay? So that's the first thing I want you to do. Second thing, as you're looking at the credit report, if there are some things on your credit report, let's say there's a debt, but you say, hey, I paid that off. That shouldn't be on there, or um, that's not the correct amount. If there's any inaccuracies, even within things that you have acquired, you need to dispute them. You can dispute those things that are not accurate on your credit report, and some inaccuracies can be pulling your credit score down. So, all of the mostly all of the bureaus, I believe, have a process that you can dispute inaccuracies on your credit right online. You can do all of this yourself. You can go online and dispute inaccuracies on your credit report, okay? So I want you to review it for inaccurate information. Um, now, so let's say you look at it, everything is correct. Um, is everything current on your credit report? And if, I, if everything is current, great. Thumbs up, everything is current, okay? Now, let's say on the flip side, um, you do have some past due accounts or you have some accounts that may be um, in default. Right here, I wanna encourage you, don't be fearful of looking at what's on your credit report or feel overwhelmed or feel any shame about having some things that you haven't been able to pay, pay it off yet. Um, there are a lot of different reasons why people have gone into debt or have passed through accounts. Maybe there's been a job loss. Maybe there's been a medical emergency. Um, there are a lot of reasons why people, um, you may have a pass through account. Okay, so the thing, first thing is don't walk in fear. Don't walk in shame. The biggest thing that I want to encourage you to do today is to stop and say, okay, I'm going to take inventory of, what, of whatever debts I have and I'm going to attack them, okay? And you're going to use various tools that we're going to this tips and things that we're talking about today to attack the debts and to move forward. The key is to never stay down, but to keep moving forward. OK, so one of the things I want I would encourage you to do if you do have um, past due accounts or accounts that um, may be in collections, um, or in default is I want you to take the smallest to large. And you can do this even if all your accounts are current and you just want to get out of debt. I want you to tackle the smallest to the largest debt first. And I know some people say, oh, go by interest rate. No, I'm gonna do the, the more proven method that 
encourage you encourages you along your financial journey to actually get the job done. And typically, it's if you tackle the smallest to the largest, so you have small wins first, and it fuels you to tackle the larger debts. Okay, so um, pull up the credit report, put them in order from smallest amounts to largest amounts, and let's go through them and tackle them and pay them off. Okay, to create a plan to pay off the debts. The other thing I want you to do as it relates to these maybe past due or default accounts is contact the creditor. Don't run from them. Calling them earlier versus later can actually open up opportunities to help you or assist you to pay them off. A lot of credit card companies have um, programs to work out the payments, um, payment arrangements, workout arrangements, but you have to contact them to find out the, about the program. You have to explain what your situation is, whether it's job loss, whether it's um, a medical emergency, you have to explain to them what's going on so that they can create a plan to help you work out or even there's a program called, you can do a settlement where basically um, you pay pennies on the dollar of what you actually owe. So let's say you owe $5,000 and they may settle the account for $1,000 or $500 in a lump sum. So there are many options to help you get rid of these debts, okay? So I want you to contact the, credit, um, the creditor about any past due Account. So we're trying to clean up your credit and get everything in good standing and everything into a current category, okay? And as you're doing this and trying to work to clean up your credit, I really want you to focus on making having uh, good credit a priority. So whatever you commit to pay, to pay it and to pay it on time. And also really commit to getting out of debt because a lot of times when you don't, when you actually don't have debt, when emergencies come, whether it's job loss or medical emergencies or anything financially that comes up that may be a more of a strain or a hardship um, on your home, when you don't have any debt, it is actually easier to weather that storm. And it's no one that you owe that you're having to worry about how I'm going to how I'm going to pay that you know every month because I don't have a, you know income coming in or I have less income coming in. It becomes a little bit easier to get through storms when you don't have debt. Okay, so make those two things a priority: having a good financial name and getting out of debt and not falling back into the trap. So let's say you give rid of that credit card balance, don't run the credit card back up. OK, and you know what your traps are with running the credit card up. Be honest with yourself. OK, and uh, the next thing I wanted to, to let you know and actually give you encouragement to take these actions and these steps to maintain a good financial name or get a financial name, restore your financial name, is there are advantages to having a good financial name. It gives you options, OK, whether it's options to build wealth, pay less, um, not more for things that you want to do. Um, it also gives you options when emergencies do arise. Um, specifically, when you have a good financial name, um, you pay less for things. So you're able to borrow or you pay borrow, borrow at lesser rates. So when you go to purchase a home, you're going to pay the best rate that a lender has if you have a great credit score. Same thing for a car. When, they, when you see car dealerships offering 0% financing, that rate goes to the people with the um, high seven, almost 800 credit score. So when you have a great credit score, you pay less for credit. A lot of um, people that are wealthy will use other people's money, i.e. a bank, and pay less, leave their money in the bank, and let's say earn, continue earning interest, their money accumulating wealth in the stock market, and just use someone else's money to finance different things that they want to do. But they can do that because they have a good financial name. If you are, if one of your visions is to start a business, um, and the business needs capital or it needs whatever it needs, 
having a good financial name actually helps you to start a business, especially if you need seed money or if you need um, capital to purchase whatever you need to do to start the business. So a, a good financial name helps you to do that. Um, if you are looking for an apartment, can't rent an apartment with bad credit, okay? So having that good financial name, it helps like with security deposits, whether it's an apartment, utilities, um, these are the things that they look at to determine how much a security deposit that you're gonna have to pay. Because remember, your financial name lets whoever know um, if you're going to pay them on time and if you're going to pay them back. So they're looking at your credibility. They're looking at your history of how you paid others. So it's important and it has advantages. Um, your, your good credit is also a negotiating tool. When you go into lenders um, for that business loan, for that home loan, you can negotiate the terms better because they see, hey, this is the type of customer that I really want to have at my institution. So they will negotiate with you because you have a good financial name. Um, now, sometimes some employers are also using your credit to determine employment. So I'm just trying to give you encouragement on why it's important for you to tackle this or to even maintain this as you're going along this financial journey, okay? Um, one tip. If you are a person that um, doesn't have debt or you get into that place where you are getting rid of your debt, you're getting it back to a current state and you're saying, okay, how can, because if you don't use your credit over time, your, um, your credit will eventually go away. Like if you have no debt, um, you have no open lines or anything, your credit will eventually go away. So I am, I am in my voice, okay, the voice that I have, I encourage you to maintain your credit. And one of the ways that you can maintain your credit, but you have to be responsible, is for your regular purchases that you may do during the month. Use your, your, your credit card, okay, to pay it, but pay it back immediately. Never charge anything that you don't have allocated in your budget and you don't have the funds already in your checking account. Not, oh, I'm gonna get it on Friday, so I'll charge it now, and I'm gonna get it on Friday, and I'll pay it back on Friday. No, have the money in your account ready to pay for it um, from your checking account, but use your credit card. Make sure that credit card is completely paid off every month. That will maintain your credit, you're doing your regular purchases on it. Sometimes some people use reward cards where it gives them points, give them cash back um, for purchases, and they just do their regular purchases, like your groceries or something like that, or even um, like a phone bill that you're already about to pay. You can use a card to pay it and then just pay it back, all right? Um, and a good way to do it is like if you get a rewards credit card with where it's getting you miles, points, um, cash back, so that actually you're getting rewarded um, for using your credit card and you're still paying your bill on time, okay? Sounds like a plan, right? So one other thing I wanted to just kind of tell you, um, just so you can have some more information about credit, is one of the questions that came up is about FICO scores. and. One of the ways, uh, the annual credit report will just tell you everything that's on your credit. One of the places that you can actually see what um, credit score you have from each bureau, and each bureau will have a different score probably. And the other thing I wanted to mention is, as you're looking at the three bureaus, make sure you go through each credit report, because sometimes different bureaus will report different things. And sometimes one debt may be on one bureau and it may not be on the other, okay? So everything doesn't have to be everywhere, but you wanna make sure all the information that's reported about you, no matter which bureau it is, it's accurate and correct, okay? So back to FICO scores. So a FICO score, the original name is called Fair Isaac & Co. So it's term FICO. The score range is between 300 and 850. So 850 is a perfect credit score. 300, of course, is needs improvement. And the way they determine your FICO score is your payment history, so being current, 
and being current. Um, as you as the as the months progress, you know, more currently you're being current. So let's say you have a past due right now, you work to pay it off. As time progresses, that will improve your score. That will improve your score. And actually, when you make specific changes like pay off credit cards, pay down credit cards, you will see um, immediate improvements in your in your scores when it's reported the next month. You will see immediate improvements when you make some of these little changes. So payment history is about 35% of how they score you being current debt to limit ratio. So if your limit is $5,000 and you charged up $5,000, you're using 100% of your available credit, that will bring your score down. However, on the flip side, if you have $5,000 in available credit and you're using nothing or you maybe use like, remember we talked about like $100, $200 a month just to pay different things off, just to pay your regular bills and you pay it off every month, that boosts your credit score. Okay, so it's showing that you pay your debts, um, you're able to use your credit limit wisely. Um, that's about 30%. So the bulk of how they determine your score is you paying on time and not using up your credit. So if you have your credit cards charged up, even if you're like making the monthly payments, that's not a good thing. Bring those balances down, okay? The age of credit is about 15%. So I recommend to people, don't cut up, don't, don't cancel your cards. You can cut them up and just put them, you know, if you don't want them anymore, but don't cancel them. Because if you've had a card for 20 years, that's a good thing on your credit report. It's showing that you have a long history with that company. So don't cancel cards that you've had for a long time. Just if you feel like, okay, I don't want to use this card anymore, just don't use it, but don't cancel it, okay? Card increase. So when you, uh, let's say, you know, this is the big thing that, you know, you go in the store and say, hey, if you open a charge account today, we'll give you 20% off or we'll give you 15% off. Don't do it. Those inquiries hurt your credit, okay? So don't fall for the, let's sign you up for a credit card and we'll give you 15% credit. They stay on there for two years. So be very careful when you apply for credit. Use that application wisely. So if you know you really need something and you really have the time, okay, this is what I wanna do, then apply, okay? Because it will hurt your credit. One point here I want to add, when you are shopping, let's say for a home loan or a car loan, if you want to shop around to see who you can get the best deal from a, from a credit, from a rate perspective, those things, they group those together. So they'll the, the agencies know when they see multiple um, applications from car dealerships or home lenders, they'll say, okay, this person is shopping for a home or shopping for a car. So each inquiry in that specific time frame, that specific type of lender will count as one. It won't count, count as multiple inquiries. I hope that you, you, you understand what I'm saying there. So shop within a certain time frame and still shop carefully, okay? All right. Um, and then mix of credit. So your mix of credit counts towards your FICO score, and that's about 10%. So like if you have an installment loan, um, revolving credit installment loans are like student loans, it's like um, car loans, um, mortgages, revolving credit is credit cards. Okay, so your mix, if you have a good mix of, of credit. So it's showing that you can maintain and pay various types of credit. One place, like I just mentioned, that you can get and check your credit score for free is creditkarma.com. It's credit and then karma is with actually a K, K-A-R-M-A, creditkarma.com. You can check as many times as you want to. They will give you your credit score. They even have some tools to figure out what can I do to boost my score. They'll say, okay, if I pay this down, um, it'll show you even if you say, okay, I want to apply for a car loan, how would that affect my score? So it has a lot of tools, credit simulators, to show you how different things will um, positively and negatively affect your credit. So check out creditkarma.com. A lot of financial institutions now, uh, whether it's a credit card that you have, they offer 
your credit score for free. Because I know like I bank with Chase and Chase offers uh, a program to give you your credit score for free. I know Capital One offers um, your credit score for free. So there's some a lot of tools um, and programs out there that would allow you to do and um, review your credit score on a more frequently basis and for free. So make sure you know your credit score before anyone else does. You should know your, what your financial name says and know what your credit score is saying about you. So um, I want to, there were a couple other questions, um, just like one off questions that came in and I want to um, answer quickly. Um, one of them I actually answered about canceling the credit cards. If you've had your credit card for a while, do not cancel the credit card. You can cut it up, but do not call the credit card company and cancel it. Pay it off, but don't cancel it. That length of history actually helps and boosts your credit score because it's showing that you've been a good um, a good payer for a long period of time. Um, another question came about through um, asking about consolidating credit cards. So, with consolidating credit cards, I want you to. Um, really take inventory of yourself and say, okay, am I responsible that if I take one credit card and I um, pay off another credit card balance with it, that I'm not going to have this credit card and then charge both of them up. So now you have two credit cards that are both charged up to the limit. So let me give you a specific example. Let's say you see an offer for a 0% credit card, okay? and you already have another credit card, let's say, that has a $1,500 balance and you're paying 20% interest on it. It will be better for you to take whatever balance is on that credit card that's offering 20% 20, 20 and put it on the 0% because you can actually, you'll pay less um, in interest and you can pay it off quicker because you're not paying interest. But what I don't want you to do is have one credit card with 1,500, then have 1,500 available and you say, hey, I'm going to put something on this other credit card because now you, if you charge up the other one too, now you have $3,000 worth of credit. So consolidating cards onto uh, one card that has a lower interest rate is a great idea to pay it off quicker, but make sure you are responsible with not charging up the credit cards now that have zero balance. Use that 0% interest card to your advantage to pay off your debt more quickly, okay? So that's my answer to that, <laughs> okay? Don't fall into that trap of now having overwhelming debt because you thought, hey, I'm gonna pay this off and then you end up charging something else, okay? Really be disciplined in not accumulating new debt. Paying off, not accumulating new. I hope that helps, okay? So thank you guys. That was all I have for today. I hope that it was useful. Um, the, big, the big ideas here today um, is know what your financial name say, says, um, maintaining a good financial name. If you don't currently have a good financial name, restore it, work on that. Don't walk in fear about knowing, knowing, okay, I have so many things that I have to clean up. Do it step by step, little by little. Take one at a time and gradually work through that and clean it up. There are huge advantages to having good credit, to having a good financial name. A lot of doors, a lot of options open up to you when you have um, good credit. You pay less. Okay, you really do. You pay less for a lot of different things um, when you have good credit. So I encourage you today to work on having a great financial name and maintaining your financial name. If you have any questions, put them in the comment box down and I will answer those questions. Um, also send questions for the next Finance Friday. I love to answer. Um, I would love to answer your question for your question to be the topic of the next Finance Fridays. I pray that this was a blessing to you and it encourages you to um, get to restoring your financial name or maintaining your financial name. Of course, I'm going to end by saying share, share, share. If you're not currently following Money Basics on Facebook, 
please um, like the page. Um, also on Instagram, everything is at money is basic on Twitter at money is basic. Um, so follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. And of course, like this Facebook page, Money uh, Money Basics page. Uh, until the next Finance Fridays, or if there's a, a special pop-up discussion I need to have or chat I need to have, I will do it. But have a great weekend, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.